21st of February, Briar Road. Hey guys, Lex here, back for some more of the Great Ace Attorney. Last time, uh, we did the Great Deduction, and, uh, the victim came back to life. So, yeah, we're gonna investigate some more. Uh, let's go. Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. A strange situation for Mr. Natsume, arrested for a murder, but then the victim comes back to life. No one took a pulse or anything. <laughs> yeah, he could have died, though. <laughs> could have brought him to the hospital right away, you know? <laughs> Instead of sending a telegram and waiting for us to come in. <laughs> I think perhaps the victim there was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamsir did consume poison, as we deduced. But was it an accident, attempted suicide, or attempted murder? Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Oh, what's this? Yeah, what's he looking at? What's that man doing over there? It looks like he's trying to see into Sasaki-san's lodgings. Something wrong, Mr. Naruto? Um, excuse me, can we have a word? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Why is everyone with the poses? <laughs> I need to start doing poses. He just ran off. I feel sure that I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Mm, I do too, but I don't remember. They were arguing. Let's take a look at the soap. With the exception of the top floor, where Mr. and Mrs. Garadep live, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on the number of windows a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poorer members of society filled many of their windows. But the tax has since been abolished, isn't it? The windows could all be opened up again, surely. Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay to have the work done. Yes, that's a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live all cooked up in a windowsless room. I suppose that's the price you have to pay for living in that very cheap accommodation. It all seems rather pointless when you point at it like that. Had to just, like, kick the window, kick the bricks down. Hmm. Yeah, no windows are broken, too. Garadep household and Mr. Natsume's lodgings are in a prominent position there in the corner. Sometimes when I look at the building, I can't help feeling that it's at a bit of a slant. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does rather look as though it would collapse even even the smallest earthquake, doesn't it? And isn't it supposed to be haunted as well? I think I might have a hunch as to why Sosuke-san has such a hunch back. There always seems to be a bicycle outside the Garuda residence. I read that bicycles are extremely popular all over Great Britain at the moment, in fact. That one seems warped though, especially the front wheel. Is that to make it more of a challenge to ride, do you think? Oh, I'm afraid that may be the result of the rider's incompetence. But the front wheel to be so badly warped, I'm afraid the rider may have been severely afflicted. Then there's a good chance Mr. Natsume has been practicing on this bicycle, I think. Oh dear, I fear you may be right. Can't, can't do that soap. Oh. I don't remember that soap being there, though. Ooh. London's blanketed in fog again, and the sky is covered in a cloud. But if you look closely in the distance, you could make out for the crystal tower being built. Oh yeah. Ah, the Crystal Tower, yes, the centerpiece of the Great Exhibition that's to open six months' time. Everyone's talking about the Great Exhibition of London at the moment, it seems. Well, it seems to be the largest event of its kind anywhere in the world, with technology and scientists from all over. I can't wait for it myself. Do you think visiting students from Far East, like us, will be granted entry? The, late, the last Great Exhibition that was held in London had more than six million visitors, it seems. This time, the British are determined to make it an even bigger success to add to the Paris Exposition. I see. That's an incredible number of people. And with so many people expected to attend, we should easily be able to slip in unnoticed. <laughs> there 
was always the honest approach of buying tickets at the main entrance, Mr. Round. <laughs> yeah. Would also try to sneak in. And... There's nothing... No man? Yep. Why has somebody built the snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? It's not a pedestal, Mr. Naruto. That's part of the snowman's body. Really? But it already has a perfectly good body. Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made from two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. Now we're looking at him as a strange. Poor man, I know how it feels. Anything. It's Japanese and British two ball snowmen that are sort of strange ones, isn't it? Oh, oh, people do have three sections. Head, torso, and legs. Do you ever think that perhaps you think about things too much? Yeah, same. I do too. But I don't think. Where are we going? Oh. Chums is sweet. Ah, uh, here it is. <laughs> it always strikes me how pretty and neatly arranged this tea set is. It's my favorite one, in fact. I think it's high time for the afternoon tea. Wait, wait there. I'll finish the special blend that I prepared for today. Oh, Iris, you do love your tea, don't you? She looks so happy at the prospect. After you drink it, I'll collect some experimental data if that's come all right. Just what is she about to make me drink? Now here's uh, Iris typing. Let me check this. Ah yes, this is where you note down ideas, isn't it Iris? So, what's on the blackboard today? Buck up, Bruno. What is it? Oh, I'm just playing around with ideas for the title of the next month's installment. Another idea I had was the Barrel Carnet. I'm really torn about which one to use. What do you think, Ryan? Anything but Bugaboo, no, obviously. Hmm, I suppose you're right. I'll tell you what, I'll surprise you with it. You'll have to wait until next month at sea. Ah, oh, so many sleepless nights. That's a charming little white shelf, and full of charming little bottles, too. Oh, yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. Ah, uh, a charming shelf full of charming bottles full of jarring ingredients. You know, Hurley mistakenly drank from one of them the other day. What? And how? I think he was lucky, though. He hasn't exploded yet. Chemistry can be very hazardous occupation. Was living with Mr. Sholmes, that's the hazardous occupation, if you ask me. Um, Iris? Mm hmm? That's incredible concentration, that is. And it's quite remarkable how she can focus on so many things, different things at once. Perhaps I should try drinking more herbal tea. A plain third from the right would be good for you, Miss Bruno. Oh, um, Iris? This girl is destined for great things, I'm sure. Look at all these mementos of Mr. Sholmes' past cases. You know Mrs. Hato's eyes sparkle every time she lays eyes on them. But yours don't do that, Bruno. Well, I've read the adventures of Herlock Sholmes now, but by order of Mrs. Hato, the trouble is... Having seen the real thing in action, somehow the stories don't quite ring true to for me. Well, he does solve the cases, in the end. I suppose so. Perhaps there's more to the great detective than meets the eye. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we arrived in the country, in fact. Although I do yearn for Japanese kotatsu, putting your legs under a warm blanket at table is so comforting. Be careful, Mr. Nahano. Don't mistakenly put your feet in the fire, will you? You'd suffer terrible burns, you know. 
I wonder, I worry sometimes about how Mrs. Sato sees me. It's curious how this enormous metal chest is being used as a coffee table. And even more curious to think that Iris' father's notes about Mr. Sholm's case are inside it. I must look in there, Luna. Those are notes on his secret between Dave and me. Mr. Sholmes isn't somehow in on the secret? He really tends to forget, you see, as soon as he solved the case, in fact. Once he read one of my manuscripts, we had a terrible argument about it. Never have I solved such a case, he said. It was absolutely adamant. Sometimes I wonder if he's from another planet, don't you? all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high. I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. Looks as though it would like topple, yet doesn't. That baton of Mr. Schultz is brilliant. I don't get it. As it happens, I'm quite well practiced when it comes to stacking shelves myself. Just the other day, the shelves in my office finally gave way under the strain though. It looks as though it topple, and it does, at the epitome of your disarray. I really don't get it. Okay, what else? Oh, here. The enormous machine takes up the entire desk, doesn't it? It's really imposing. Ah, Hurley, scraped an endless scope. Yes, it can analyze anything at all, you know. But I've never seen anyone actually using it. Well, to this invention, so I don't know how to operate it. Why don't you get it to analyze its own operation then? Oh, Runo, you're razor sharp today, aren't you? <laughs> and a violin. This is Mr. Sholmes' famous violin. The one he found being sold for a song at the Brown Brokery. What's it called? A shoddy song? <laughs> oh yes, this wonderful instrument features in the more features of Ms. Herlock Sholmes. It's a world famous Stradivarius. Stradivarius. Stradivarius, Mr. Arado. Tragic. Stradivore. We've been trying to have... Come back to this another time, I think. Let's see. Let's go to the office. Oh. It's not set up yet. <laughs> 21st of February, Arahodos Legal Consultancy. I'm just doing the... What to do? Soseki-san is so terribly unlucky, is he? You could say that again. Suspected of two different murders in two days. I've never known anybody to be so badly in the wrong place at the wrong time so many times. Uh, I have. And I'm looking at him right now. Huh. You know, I hadn't really considered it much before, but I think you might be right. I've been quite unlucky in that respect, haven't I? Am I cursed? Oh no, Miss Naruto-san. I'm sure you're overthinking it. I'm, I'm only doing this for the achievement. <laughs> but I actually do like looking at all this stuff. Perhaps we should put the spade away somewhere. That's not a spade, Naruto said. That's a shovel. Yeah, that's a shovel. No, shovels are for digging. This one's for scooping up loose material as a spade. Spades are flat. Oh, spades are for digging. That's for scooping up loose materials. It's a shovel. Oh, shovels are for digging. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter, does it? You're so right, Naruto said. We mustn't quarrel for such trifles. On reflection, then, I think I'll leave this bed. <laughs> yes. yes, I think that's for the best. We may need a shovel when we're working on the cart. The shovel, because shovels are pointy and flat. And then the spades are flat. For scooping things. Ah, oh, I can't click on the ladder. Nothing particular of note. What? I heard there's another room behind that door. Yes, it's my bedroom now, Hanasan, as you well know. 
Shall I help you unpack your things? It's very kind, but no thank you. The luggage looks very heavy. Are you sure I can't help you move it? It's very kind, but really, no thank you. Perf. Young Maine's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know. The only secret I have is the 5 yen banknote hidden on the backside of my Dharma <laughs> These tanks are for keeping sea creatures. They're called aquariums, and they were all in the range in London at one time, apparently. Yes. The English are so clever coming up with the idea of having ocean life on display at home. It means you always have an emergency midnight feast on hand, too. Not sure that's really the idea. Not much. Let's see what else. Deb. Oh god, there's a lot to examine here too. 21st of February, the Garadeb's room. Here we are again, the eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. Still burnt. We're here because Mr. Garadeb's the one who discovered the incident this morning, don't forget. Ah, you chaps, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation caught yesterday. It's quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadev as anyone really. Came straight back here after all that business at the Gaily yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up to more ball and nonsense this morning. I wonder, you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadev? Yes, I suppose you'd like to know more about that dead loss of an actor champ in the ground floor room. Those were exactly Inspector Grigton's words, weren't they? He could stand. Oh yeah. He was on the stand. <laughs> so, of course. Uh, still broken. These shells look like they were been completely torn apart by a wild beast. Hmm. Reminds me of the Battle of May War, don't you know? Ah, the experiences of a seasoned veteran. Enemy had us surrounded on all sides. You really thought we were done for, the whole body company. We were taking a real pounding from them cannons, so all we could do was run for our lives. Oh, I thought that story was going on in a different direction, actually. Well, the whole experience taught me one thing, I can tell you. When you're done for, you're really done for. Uh, that's not what a lawyer often finds himself under fire wants to hear. There's a good view on the wind tree east end from up here. It's an impressively grey scene. There's really nothing comparable in Japan. Down below, Briar Road, partly blanketed in snow. And the pavement where poor Miss Green was struck in the back by the knife. Think about it, this is the only room in this building that actually has a window to the outside world. Sometimes Great Britain really does seem like a strange land, doesn't it? I suppose all foreign cultures seem strange at first. Imagine how an Englishman would feel arriving in Japan and seeing people with a chumogay top knot. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. That's an impressive collection of cakes on that fancy silver cake stand there. I feel sure that it was full of cakes when we first investigated in here as well. Yes, quite right. I haven't touched it since. I haven't done much at all since it all happened. Time's rather stood still for me, you know. Oh. Time has stood still? Oh, that's an interesting phrase. I'd be able to use that excuse when I'm supposed to be tidying up the office. <laughs> could just tidy it up, Mr. Haruto. We know that the screen is hiding now. The aftermath of the fire alteration the other day. Hmm. Don't suppose I'll be able to clear that mess for some time now. Oh dear, this must be a very difficult situation for you. I'll say, people talk about twists of fate and whatnot, but this was a twist of and a half, a rotten shell all around. He's clearly struggling with everything that's happened. 
You look very dashing in your uniform there, Mr. Irida. Ah, oh, that old portrait, eh? Drawn by an art student who used to rent the room downstairs. Oh, look so wonderfully young and courageous and strong. Yes, well, the chap presented it to me one day and asked if I'd let him off the month's rent in return. <laughs> oh, I see. So, you did, presumably? I probably well did not. Oh. Portrait is a portrait, but rent is rent. Yeah. And yet, it's still there probably on the wall. Ah yes, those enormous mortar shells. It's quite something seeing them all up close, isn't it? Didn't you say something about firing them into the barracks, Mr. Garrett? Ah, oh, you remember that, do you? Just a little mishap that occurred during training one day. What are you doing firing on your own men? The captain of the ballot at me. Not surprised, a little mishap doesn't really do it justice, does it? Well, one has these in little incidents when one's a hot-headed young private. Perhaps I should put some evidence that resulted from one of my little mishaps on display. Oh, does the great lawyer like the great detective want to exhibit some trophies of his finest moments? Yeah. Good to see Mr. Garadip's Medal of Honor still probably displayed on the wall. Inscription rates for distinguished participation, if you remember. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Because I remember thinking even I might stand a chance of picking up honors like that. Wouldn't know what to look at now, perhaps, but I had my devil may care days, you know. Devil may care? What did you get up to? Eh. Well, all in the past now, of course, and best left there. That's not I want to know now. your military uniform, isn't it, Mr. Herodep? Well, ceremonial garb, yes. Been hanging on the wall ever since my retirement bash. Not in active service now, you know. Doesn't mean much to me anymore. You could have the old thing if you wanted it. Oh, sweet. Well, it might suit Lord Van Zeeks, perhaps. An overly ostentatious outfit like that could just be just what he needs. Very tactful, Mrs. Sato. Very tactful indeed. And books and canon. Oh, a copy of France magazine. The adventures of her luck shows is being read all over London. Isn't it wonderful? Naturally, one asks oneself if such a singular detective could really exist. But having met the chap, it's undeniable. He is most certainly singular. Singularly dangerous. That's genuine public opinion for you, Mrs. Hato. Perhaps it should be reflected in the stories. Make no mistake, Mr. Narahoto. I intend to snuff out the sort of public opinion we just heard personally. Starting to see where Mr. Sholmes' untainted reputation comes from now. There's a single apron drying on that enormous cannon shaped clothes horse look. No, Mr. Narahoto, that's a real cannon. I knew that. Just testing you. Piece of history, that is. Seen plenty of action on the battlefield, I could tell you. Now the old girl and I are just enjoying a peace and quiet of retirement together. And of course, she'd come in handy if the enemy decided to launch an attack again. Is there a war going on that I don't know about? Cool. Finally talked to him. <laughs> this morning is incident. It must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. Ah, well, the hopeless actor chap races at five o'clock a sharp every morning without fail. But at five thirty this morning, he still hadn't lit the gas. So I went down and knocked on his door, but no Polly answer. That's when you broke into his room by getting down the door. Well, I called that rum-looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could have just overslept by half an hour. 
That's very true, Mr. Naruto. If 30 minutes is over sleeping warranted such a behavior, I'd have to kick your door down every morning. Well, um, you know, better to be safe than sorry with all that. Is it just me or is he avoiding our gaze now all of a sudden? Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found on the far side of your door. Hmm. The victim's name is Mr. Shamsphere, I believe. Is that right? Yes, William Shamsphere. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute? Well, let's face it. The only redeeming feature to that room is the cheap rent. Anyone, anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has a body screw loose. It's so hard to choose which category Sosuke-san would fall into. Mr. Arahodo, that's a little rude. I was doing research as well. Research? To what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare. I read a few plays of the old Bob myself, you know. Romeo and Hamlet and all that. <laughs> yes, William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sao in Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy-handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shakespeare would have had much in common. Hmm. Shakespeare interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Naruto, really? How rude. After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well, now, must have been about six in the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily, so I remember. It was completely dark already. That failed actor chap was out at the time. Mr. Karadeb noticed that there was no light from his room or something, I suppose. Couldn't summon energy for anything much. So I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was after 8 before Shamsphere got back. The chap was up until past 1 in the morning, I'll have you know. I suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark there. Well, thank you. That was very illuminating. Mm. Is everything alright, Mrs. Hato? Well, I was just thinking it's a little strange, that's all. Mr. Garrett, you were up here in your room all evening, if I understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs. Not with his blasted leg. Then... How is it that you seem to know? The precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. <laughs> That's a very good point. Can't imagine that you could hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? I say, I know what you're thinking. It's a bali outrage. I'm ex-military, don't you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants. Why would I? Then how did you know Mr. Gerd? It's the gas, woman. The gas tells me everything. Uh, the gas? Speaking gas? What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is supplied to the building by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less work that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's say I was to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly. But at the same time, 
The lights in all the other rooms of the house were dim for a moment. What? They dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it really briefly uses more gas than usual. That reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps are dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? Sounds rather undesirable. <laughs> Charlie, good point. In fact is, the gas company pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless, long worn out. Barely got any gas in them to start with. Opposite's also true, of course. Extinguish the lamps up here, and they glow brighter in the rest of the house. Ah, right, I see. So watching the flickering of the lamps in one room can determine what's happening elsewhere. Got it. Oh, of course. Because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps and fires. Well, that's a new pose. Clever. In point of fact, the room on the ground floor and the one above it uses slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh, that's fascinating, Mr. Yurdep. Absolutely fascinating. Oh, well, nothing to it, really. I can't really see that it's going to help us with the case either. Well, I'd like to know. That's why Mr. Gerardeb is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsuma again. Good idea. Cool. And this episode's taking longer than I thought. Oh. 21st of February. Local prison. Cell number 9. Same cell. Look, Mr. Naruto. Mr. Natsume, if the police finish questioning you now... Look up student Mr. Naruto Squire. Oh, yes? Where is he? Tell me, is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess, you're talking about Mr. Sholmes. He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume, not a ghost. But, but his diabolic deductions, they're not of this world. They've, they've, they've left me. Ah, uh, cursed. I'm cursed, I tell you. Well, that sort of hurts. Credit where credit is due, Mr. Naruto. You were heavily involved in the deduction, too. Yes, I'm um, moving on. We have some wonderful news. Oh. The victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again. Oh. Oh, in the absolutely worst case, you could be only tried for attempted murder. That's great, isn't it, Mr. Natsume? That's terrible! Oh, I'm stuck in this cell, suffering for some silly thing. Wrong end of the stick. You did it, didn't you? Confess, you're a killer. Why the mustache? God said questions. Sorry to hear that. Ah, that selfish shyster. Make up your mind, are you dead or alive? If you were going to come back to life, why bother dying? I could be wishy-washy William. Well, it seems like that Mr. Shamsphere was never actually dead in the first place. Ah, yes, that might make more sense. I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. Our lively debate last night was much fun. I'd be sad to think it was our last. Oh. Oops. Oh, um, Mr. Natsume, does this mean that you did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamsphere, didn't you? Uh, I'm not saying another word. I demand to have a lawyer present. Who do you think I am? Please, Mr. Natsume. We need to hear your side of the story. Uh, why am I cursed like this? What happened? Can you tell us exactly what happened last night then, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell. 
But, Mr. Naruto Esquire, I'm eternally grateful to you for helping me with that accursed case yesterday. The case that saw poor Miss Green hospitalized after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe that it was only yesterday. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary back to the my lowly lodgings. And that evening, at past nine, I must have been, I visited Mr. Shamsphere. So you did go to the victim's room then? As we feared. I didn't do anything wrong. I'd never been to his room before. It was the first time. Made you decide to go. Bumped it in when I arrived back at the house. We got chatting and it developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. It ties in with what Mr. Garadip said. The victim went out and came back after eight. We met again later that evening at around nine or just after. I took him some nice tea I brewed as a gift. It was you who brought the tea that had clearly been drunk at the scene then. And I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, were you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet. Who was strong? It was a delightful debate. I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject, Shakespeare. And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison into Mr. Shamsphere's tea? <laughs> no, never. Not at all. Team Juliet won. That was me. When I left his room, the flamboyant fellow was fighting a fit, I swear. Categorically. Mr. Natsume, you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a cursed existence. I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now, and in that time I've learned that there's no place for me. It can be very trying to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. There are foreigners everywhere I look. They all stare at me. They all laugh. That's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember. And then, one week ago, I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why do you choose that place? It doesn't seem very comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it spoke to me. Rent? Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Cursed? Cursed how? The previous occupant, the man who lived there before I took the room, died there. Oh no! He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead and no one could explain why. Surely, no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. I did. When the letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. But I want books, and books cost money. A horrible history is a small price to pay. When I realized it would mean I could buy more books, I signed the lease like lightning. Brave or blinkered. But after I moved in, I can't I soon came to realize what I'd done. I, I, I realized how horrible the room's history really was. Gosh, was it really so awful? How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsume? What happened? At, at first, it, it was just a feeling. The feeling of beady eyes pouring into my back watching me. You think that might just just been your mind playing tricks on you? No, no, no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been one long nightmare ever since I was g given the keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All, all the souls who've died in that room. I lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me. That's really horrible. And now I come to think of it, it happened again last night too. The very same night, Mr. Shamsir was writhing in agony from the poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. 
You simply must move out of this room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. I know it. That's why. I'm already searching for the next room with a history to call home. I think perhaps you should try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared that you yourself may become history. Ah! <gasps> Phew. Sasatano-san knows how to make a man listen. Of course, Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Mr. Garadab? Yes, he knows that if people hit dying there, he'll never be able to run it out again. Well, that's true, as for one wouldn't go near the place. Ah, perhaps. That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean, because he's worried about their well-being? He does seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such a close tabs on the occupants of his lead rooms. What do you mean, he pays so much attention to the gas lamps? Oh dear, no, well, it's nothing to do with you, Mr. Nuts. Please forget any said anything. Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. It's important is that Mr. Shamsir isn't, in fact, dead at all. Once he comes around and he's able to tell us what happened, he'll, we'll be able to get you released. Yes, please, I do hope you're right. <laughs> Excuse me. Inspector Gregson. I couldn't help but overhearing what you just said, and on that note, I have some good news and some bad news. Oh. Which do you want first? Bad news? Always every time the bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Right, well, in that case, the good news it is that... <laughs> ah! Sorry, but it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. Then why did you ask for my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamsu, was just unconscious. He's come around now. Yes, we saw it happen. Oh, it's terrifying glory. He's been treated to by the doctors, but we've managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsumi? Oh, thank goodness. It's all over then. I can leave the sopper cell. Sorry, no. That's not on the cards. What? I ever not, Inspector. Mr. Shamspear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh dear. You, you don't mean. Sorry to say I do, yes. He's pointing at the finger at you, Mr. Natsume. Ah! By sweet poison that he seeketh to end my life. That wicked caitiff. So skin that to me. No. So I'm afraid you'll be appearing in the court as planned. You'll be wanting to make necessary preparations. Mm. No. And so, once again, Sasaki san found himself having to take a dock at the old Bailey. Whether his room was haunted or whether he was just unterribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I would represent him in court, and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. Yeah, hey, at least he's not dead. This is another case where there's no deaths. Oh, that's cool. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. See ya. Bye.